after naming the molecule of butene, when we have four different carbons, we can actually play around by placing different groups. In the first case, I am going to add a chlorine on position number one to construct one chloro, one chloro, two butene. So this is one chloro because the chloro is in position number one, two butene. Of course, we complete with hydrogens and they can also build uh, two chloro. To butene when I place this chlorine in carbon number two. If instead of having a chloro, I change the position, I can place the methyl group on carbon number two. Now I will be building, this is now two methyl to butene. But if I place the methyl on carbon number four, if I'm placing the methyl on carbon number four, now my substance no longer is a butene because when I see here now we have carbon number one, two, three, four, and five. Now that has become a pentene. We have seen the molecule of two pentene in the previous slide that has the double bond on carbon number two and is five carbons long. Five carbons long is pent ENE because of the family name, but because we have two hydrogens between carbon two and three, so these two carbons are bonded to hydrogens, we can have cis and trans isomers for two pentene. So we can have a cis two pentene where the two hydrogens are towards the same side, or we can have a trans two pentene when the two hydrogens are on opposite side. That is not going to be the case for one pentene. When we see one pentene, we have two hydrogens on the first carbon, and this is the skeletal formula for one pentene. This is the skeletal formula for two pentene. And if we see these two, they are exactly the same molecule. The only difference is that we need to start numbering on the opposite side, but it's indicating the same molecule. This is one more example to name alkenes without substituents and in here we can see that we have a hexene with different position for the double bond. The first one is when the double bond is between carbon number one and two, that is one hexene. I have the condensed formula and also the skeletal formula, but we need to practice to make it simple when we are doing the lecture using the skeletal formula. We see the difference between the 1 hexene and 2 hexene is the position of the carbon carbon double bond. We also have another isomer and that is 3 hexene. If we see the structure 1, 2, 3, it's the same than this one, it's the same concept that I explained in the previous slide. But the only thing is that we will have cis trans isomers for all of these that contain the double bond between two carbon. When it is on the beginning carbon, we call this to be a, a um, geminal alkene and it will not have cis-trans isomerism. So the cis-trans isomers for C6H12 will be only for 2-hexene and 3-hexene. In these two examples, now we have alkenes 1 that is the beginning carbon double bond, so that is a 1, and it has 5 carbons long, it's a 1 pentene. 1 is to state the position of the double bond. Pent because it's 5 carbons long. ENE because it belongs to the family of alkene. And now we have branches. In these examples we have branches. The first example it is a 2-methyl, so this is a methyl group, and of course I have here what is the condensed formula? So you see that we have two hydrogens on the beginning carbon and we have a methyl on carbon number two substituent. So that is a two methyl, which is going to be the prefix, the one for the locant for the position of the family name, that is the for the family of alkene, and pent because it's five carbons long. The second one, we have a methyl group, and when it was assigning the carbon number one for the family of alkane, we have 
to start when it was closer to the branch. So if this was an alkane, we would have started numbering this as carbon number one. But when it has a double bond, instead, we need to give priority to get closer to the carbon-carbon double bond. So if we number this as one, two, three, my carbon-carbon double bond will be between carbon number three and four. I rather have to start on this side, and that is carbon number one, two, therefore that will be a four methyl, that is a methyl substituent, two pentene, because the carbon-carbon double bond is between carbon number two and three. And here I am showing the skeletal structure. With this molecule, I want to remove some misconceptions from the students. And that is that sometimes the longest hydrocarbon chain might not be very obvious. In this case, you guys observe that the longest hydrocarbon chain must contain the double bond. And that is both carbons that are part of the double bond. I cannot say that this is the longest hydrocarbon chain because it has the carbon double bond, but it must be including both of the carbons that are sp2 carbons that are forming the double bond. So we need to consider this part as a substituent on the double bond, and that will be the molecule of a 2-methyl-1-butene. It is a butene because it is four carbons long, and it has a substituent on position number two. A second example with the same concept, what we observe in this one is that we have a seven carbons long hydrocarbon chain, but this one is, I will say eight carbons long, is longer. However, the longest hydrocarbon chain for the family name must be including both of the carbons. So this one is a heptene where the double bond is in carbon number one and two. So that is a one heptene that happens to be substituted with an ethyl group on position number two. So this one is two ethyl, one heptene. This is kind of a summary of all that we have learned for the nomenclature of alkenes. The first molecule is a five carbons long, so that is a paint. It has a double bond, therefore it's a ENE ending, and it has a double bond between carbon number two and three, so this is a two pentene. And of course, because we understand now about cis trans, that will be a trans two pentene. We can also have a cis two pentene, but this one is a trans two pentene because the two larger groups are on opposite side. The two hydrogens will be on also on opposite side. When we look at one monosubstituted alkene, if we don't have this methyl group in here, that will be a 2-pentene as well. It's nearly the same. But now we have a substituent. One hydrogen was removed, and we have a methyl group. Now we say that this is a 2-pentene that has the methyl group on carbon number 2. So this is a 2-methyl 2-pentene. When we start numbering for the third structure, we might think, that we can start on this carbon because there is a branch. But we always say that the functional group, the carbon-carbon double bond, will take precedence over the alkyl substituents. Therefore, this one is going to be a 3,4 dimethyl because we have two of the same and we are using the dash. 3,4, this is a common, dimethyl 2-pentene. In the second case, for the dash substituted kind, we have the two methyl groups bonding the same carbon, carbon number four. The double bond is between carbon two and three again. We say here one, two, three, and if we start on this side, that will be assigning number one, two, three to the double bond. The double bond must always obtain the smallest possible number. So this one is a 4,4-dimethyl 2-pentene. This is the last structure to practice the nomenclature of alkenes. The only difference that we have now is a, is a heptene, but it has the carbon-carbon double bond between carbon number 2 and 3. Uh, we also have, instead of a methyl, we also have a chloro. So now we need to consider the alphabetical order. So we know that it's 7 carbons long, so it's a heptene. The position of the double bond is carbon number two and three. We only bring carbon number two. 
We don't need to state that it's two and three because it's understood that it's a continuous carbon, it's an adjacent carbon. We say that the position of the methyl group is in carbon number four, and we say six chloro because it has to be in alphabetical order. We cannot start numbering from this carbon here because if we do, the carbon carbon double bond will be carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and the smallest number, according to IUPAC, must be given to the double bond. And here we are observing that we can have two possible isomers, cis isomer, the two hydrogens towards the same side, and also the trans isomer for the hydrogens on opposite side.